Hey friends, I'm Rhiannon from Drawn by Rhiannon and today I thought I'd take you on a tour of my studio. So this is my studio, it's a home studio which is very handy, it's just at the bottom of my garden so it's a, it's a pretty short commute, I can't complain. So when I moved here it was sort of like an abandoned summer house kind of thing, there was like a big wall down the middle here and uh, yeah it was just like full of garden stuff and toys and everything so I had a big clear out, had the middle wall taken down. Uh, had some insulation put in and as you can see it's a pretty low ceiling because we've got so much insulation up here but I had these really nice bright lights put in there were two doors here when I moved in because um, it was split into two sections so I had one of the doors sealed off and then had a proper door put on the main entrance to make it nice and secure so there's been a lot of evolutions of the studio I'm always changing the layout of it um, either because I'm getting new stuff in here or because I've thought of a better way to lay it out but I've had this layout for um, pretty much all year I think which is quite amazing for me so and it's working really well so I thought I would give you a quick tour around show you some of the stuff that I use to make all the lovely things that drawn by Rhiannon and uh, yeah just give you a little insight into what goes on in the studio here so this is where I spend the majority of my time at my sewing machine. So this is a pretty old sewing machine, I picked it up second hand off Gumtree. Um, but it's brilliant, it's an industrial sewing machine so um, it has no problem handling the ridiculous amounts of sewing that I do on it. So it's actually an ex-barber machine. So uh, Barber is based just down the road in South Shields and the lady who I got this off used to work at Barber and then they were given the sewing machines to take home to do sort of piecework from home. It's nothing fancy but it works brilliantly um, and then kind of if anything goes wrong with it it's so kind of mechanical like there's no computerization to it at all that I can basically have a look at it and I can usually work out what's gone wrong. Then as you can see on the wall behind me I've got loads of lovely lovely prints and artwork by small businesses so I'm going to do a little video of that and then I'll tag those makers so you can go and check them out. most of my time at the sewing desk so I've got sort of everything that I need just an easy reach here so I got this lamp ages ago like years and years ago from Hobbycraft but it's brilliant because it's got like a daylight lamp on it so it gets some really nice light in and it's on a like a bendy thing so that uh, if I'm sewing something and it's getting really dark I can literally bend it right down to the sewing machine so I can see what I'm doing and then it's got all this storage on it as well so I've got all my bits and pieces in here, I've got like spare bobbins and um, all my sewing clips which are really really handy for when I'm sewing the water resistant fabric. Um, then we've got the big pliers which are used for doing the metal tips on the end of the aprons but also sometimes if my sewing machine isn't working and I need to yank the wheel around then I use these pliers for that as well. Then I've also got my point turner which I use all the time for the makeup pads, the sponges cleaning wipes, all that kind of thing to really get into the corners, give it a really nice sharp point. And then, you know, ruler, pens, pencils, that kind of thing, just general office stationery. Then of course I got my pins, very, very important. I am just so jealous of people that can sew without pinning it first, but I am not one of those people. So I have two types of pins. I've got my shorter pins here, which I use for on the makeup pads and uh, on pencil cases and coin purses, basically the smaller items I use these. And then I've got the longer pins, which are great for when I'm pinning the fabric 
onto your backing or anything like that because these can hold a lot more. I would just say one thing that is super, super handy. This is a magnetic pin dish and it's just so much easier than having a pin cushion because you don't have to get the angle just right to get the pins in. You literally just chuck it on and it catches them. Brilliant, brilliant. Then unrelated to sewing, but something that I use an awful lot is this ring light. So it's got a little holder for your phone. So if I'm doing stories on Instagram, then I'll just pop my phone in here so that my hand's not shaking while I'm doing the video. And this light is brilliant. It's got like three different settings on it. So you get a cool light, a warm light, and then like a natural light. Um, and it's actually really bright. So when I'm doing my photography, I use this. Um, and it's brilliant for that. Um, it was super cheap. I think it was like 10, 12 pounds from Home Bargains. So would highly recommend if they still sell that to go and grab yourself one because it is really good. Just behind me up here, I've got all my scissors hanging up. So I've got loads of different types of scissors for different jobs. Um, but I'm thinking I'm gonna just do a whole nother video just on scissors because there's just, there's so many different types. And I thought it might be useful for some of you if I talk through all the different types of scissors that I use and what I recommend. Then just behind me here, I've got all my zips. So I basically just use four colours of zips. I got blue, pink, white and cream. So these are all organised here. Um, I say organised, they're like thrown in, in colours. It's very unorganised. But yes, I, uh, I went a bit crazy with zips. Um, at one point I was sewing loads and loads and loads of zips before I introduced the reusable collection and I would just get through hundreds of zips. So I just bought them in bulk because um, it was cheaper. A local fabric shop was closing down and they had them on clearance. So I thought, I'm just gonna buy them. I'm gonna use them at some point. I might as well get them now. So I think I'm probably set for zips for life now. And just behind that as well, I don't know if you can see, but I just got my little calendar there. So I just have a wall calendar where I can plan out the whole year, write all my events and everything like that to try and keep me on track. Especially around Christmas, it just gets really, really crazy. And I just find it really useful to have it all mapped out on the wall so I know exactly where we are. Then over here, I've got like my printing station. So I've got my printer that I use to print off your postage. And then underneath, I've got all the paper and card and everything. Uh, so if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have a very love-hate relationship with the printer. For a long time, I had one that just didn't work. So earlier this year, I ended up getting a new one. And it's a bit more basic than the last one I had, but it works great. So I'm chuffed a bit with it. So this is an HP OfficeJet 7110. Uh, it prints in A3 and it also does like A3 Plus, I think it's called. You get like the extra wide format. If, if you need to do some A3 printing and you don't have like a massive budget for a printer, I would recommend this one. It is really good. Then next to the printer here, I've got this big cupboard that's just full of fabric. So I actually bought this when I was a student from the Oxfam furniture shop. I think it was like 10 or 20 pounds or something. Um, but it's a great piece of furniture. It's very solid. I can tell you from trying to move it. But it's handy because it fits all my lining fabrics in. I've got my lining fabrics, my wadding, um, everything like that. Then it's got these drawers underneath where I can keep all sorts of bits and bobs. So I've got big reels of cotton that I've got. And then I've got all my wool if I ever wanted to do any crochet, which I just never have time for anymore, but there you go. Um, and then just like little bits and pieces that are kind of bulky, so they don't really go on a shelf, um, but they fit really nicely in these drawers here. Then over here, I've got my Cricut. So this is what I use to cut out the packaging for the beeswax wraps. So it's basically just a digital cutting machine. So I link it up with the computer and tell it that I want it to cut a rectangle out of an envelope and it just does it. And it's a lot more precise than me doing it by hand. And you know, when you've got hundreds to make, it fits quicker and better for my hands to do it on the machine for sure. Then just next to that, just got my little packaging bit here. So this is all the tissue paper that the bigger items get wrapped in for going out. And then I have this yellow card that I used to use for um, background shots for my photography, but I just kind of decided that I wanted it to all be blue to just all match in together. So I don't really use that anymore, um, but I just hold on to it just in case. Then this cupboard here is like the packaging station. So I've got all my packaging supplies in here. And then just on top is where I package your orders. So inside, it looks a little bit crazy. I won't lie to you, there's a lot going on in here, but basically I've got all the mailing boxes here and then you've got the carrier bags for the markets just here. And all these magazine files have got like stickers and uh, little postcards and just all the other little bits that go into packaging and order. So in case you didn't know, all my packaging is completely plastic free. So it goes in the cardboard mailing boxes and then it's taped together with paper tape, um, which is just as strong as parcel tape and it's completely plastic free. So happy days. Then just in here as well, you've got all the little bits and pieces for the Christmas gift wrap. 
Um, I'm thinking I might do a separate video later in the year just telling you about the Christmas gift wrap options. So I'll leave that for now. It involves jingle bells, cinnamon sticks, the whole shebang. It's very festive, it's lovely. <laughs> then over here in the corner I've got my bookcase which is full of books that I no longer have time to read. Um, but uh, it's a lot of, it's all like design books. We've got fashion design, fashion illustration, print design, packaging design, uh, general sewing, um, graphic design, it's all sorts of stuff. When I was a student in Southampton, I used to go to Salisbury for the day quite often, and there was a brilliant bookshop there. I don't know if it's still there, but it was on the marketplace, and they used to have these design books for like three, four pounds when they retail at like 30, 40 pounds. So I well and truly stocked up on design books then. But I still use a lot of them for reference, like when my sewing machine goes wrong, or if I'm drafting a pattern for something, um, or if I'm looking for new ways to design a print. Then I always head to the books rather than going to the internet. I just find it easier to flick through a book than to go through loads of pages on Google. Then on these shelves here we've got all the stock. So this is always expanding and it is getting to the point now where I'm just running out of space. So I, d I don't really know what the next plan is because I've used up all the space in the studio. But I just put them all in these boxes so I can see what I've got um, and so that I know they're protected, they're not going to get damaged or damp or anything like that. I'm constantly doing stock checks just to make sure that the website stock's right. It gets out of whack quite a lot I think from doing markets and like trying to keep on top of the website stock. So I just like to do a manual stock check sort of every few weeks just to make sure that what's on the website is actually available to buy. <laughs> I'm hoping at some point to be able to get some sort of system where I can say when I sell it at the market it will automatically take it off my website but I don't know how to do that. So if you're a small business owner and you have a system similar to that, uh, drop it in the comments, tell me about it so that I can um, I can do that too. <laughs> then this cupboard here is just full of all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, it was here when I moved in, it was actually in the bathroom, but I thought it would be really useful storage for in here, and it is. So we've got all sorts of bits and pieces, like extra sewing bits. Um, I've got my overlocker in here, which um, I cannot get to grips with, but maybe one day. <laughs> I've got buttons, I've got all the spare fabric that needs making, I don't know if you can see that but there is still a ginormous stack of fabric to make into new items. And then in here I have got all of my art supplies, so this is everything that I use for making the new prints. So in here I've got all the drawing things, so I've got pencil crayons, drawing inks, oil pastels, pro markers, everything like that. And then in this drawer I've got all the painting stuff, so I've got all my paintbrushes, acrylics, watercolours, everything. So all sorts and bits of pieces. And then just as well on the bookcase back here, I don't know if you can see it in here, but this big stack here is all sketchbooks. So I really need to stop buying sketchbooks when they're on offer because I have plenty. But yeah, they're getting pretty full up now. Um, I don't really like to throw away sketchbooks even when they're full because there's just like so much work in there and I like to flick back through it to sort of see where I've come, see how I've progressed as an artist. Then finally, this is my computer desk where I spend far too much of my time doing admin and this is obviously where I do my digital print designing as well. So I used to have a laptop that I had when I was a student but after five years, well no, six years, I've been absolutely battered to death. Uh, it, it's pretty run down, it's pretty slow. So <laughs> earlier this year um, I had to get a proper computer that's uh, like custom built for being able to manage the print designing that I do. And I've just got a wireless keyboard and mouse just so that I can move it really easily if I need more space for when I'm doing sewing. Then I've also got this graphics tablet, so I got this when I was an A-level student, so this is really getting on now. Um, this one is a very small one, um, but it's really really handy. Um, this is just, you use this as like a drawing pad and in, instead of using a mouse. So if I'm doing any photo editing and I need to um, select a certain area to change the colour or you know remove something, I just find it so much easier to do it with this rather than with a mouse. Also if I ever do any digital drawings for my print, which I can't actually remember last time I did one of those, but I use this. So this is a Wacom tablet, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'm pretty sure they still make versions of these, probably much newer and not much better than this, but yeah like I say I've had this for Oh, aging myself here, uh, 10, 12 years, something like that, um, and it still works absolutely fine, so they're a very good brand, I would highly recommend them. So that's it, that was just a quick little tour of my studio, I hope you found that interesting, if there's anything that you'd like to know any more information about, just let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give it a like, and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel. 
I've also got another workspace here which is my workshop where I do sort of all the messy kind of things so I might give you a tour of that another time. Thanks for watching, hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you later. Bye! Thank you.